the way you present yourself to the world, like how you like how you walk, how you talk, how you just yeah. like uh, just do anything in life. I just like practice that. Like you are an excellent person, and like yeah. being present with your own self, like. There's no better feeling. When the pain of staying where you are becomes more painful than the pain of change, that's when real change occurs. Welcome to the Strength Connection Podcast, a show to share stories, insights, and experiences in strength, physically, mentally, and spiritually. I'm Michael Krukowski, host of the Strength Connection, and I'm so grateful that you can join me today. So in these episodes, I connect with some of the most inspiring and successful individuals to chop it up and learn from true life experiences that have helped them become who they are, the strongest versions of themselves. One of the greatest ways I've always learned the most important lessons is through stories. We all have them and they make us who we are. So let's dive in, here we go. So I've known Anthony Flores for some time, but this was the first chance I got to sit one-on-one -on -one with him and hear his incredible story. Anthony has one of the most incredible stories of true transformation in his life. At one point, he was over 350 pounds and in the middle of his journey of losing this weight, he gets the call that no one ever wants and he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. So this was one of the most emotionally charged conversations I've been a part of and Anthony is a shining example of what changing your mindset can really do for your life. So with that, we're gonna get right to it. Before we do, please show support for the show. Make sure you subscribe and rate the podcast wherever you're listening and also check out our YouTube channel, The Strength Connection. Your support means everything to me, guys. I sincerely appreciate you. All right, thank you very much. Let's get on with the show. Welcome back, everybody. Anthony Flores. I said, I feel like this has been a long time coming, man. Yeah, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. No doubt. No, I appreciate you taking the time, man. So it's funny. I've I've known you for a while, it feels, from some mutual connections that we've done in the business group. But this is the first time I've got to really chat with you one-on-one -on -one about your journey, which is, you know, really such an incredible thing. I'm excited to dive into it. But I really appreciate you taking the time to to jump on and uh and give us some space here. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you having me. I know you have a you can pick anybody and you have a lot of big names on your um, show already. So I'm super grateful and honored to be on here. Yeah, no doubt. So I'm going to throw a fastball right at you uh, off okay. the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you've, you've popularized and coined a beautiful phrase, which is the easy day life. Yeah. What does the easy day life mean? Oh, you know, it's, just, it's so having that type of winning mindset, a positive one. It's like, you know, winning means anything. So like nailing it down, it's a positive lens that you see through your mind, your your eyes, your body, all that fun stuff. And no matter what's going on in your life, just know it's it's just a temporary feel. It's just another easy day. Because any day above ground is is a great day to be alive. <laughs> Even though sometimes like we get thrown with challenges. It, it may not seem like it, but you just know it's just a temporary feel and mm -hmm. you'll get past it. Yeah. It's such a, a beautiful, people, yeah. And people just like tend to crumble and not manage like that to get themselves out of it. And I'm here to, you know, teach and show that it is possible to get out of a rut, even though if it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful when I, when I hear you uh, coin that, and then I've seen the work and the content that you put out and it's always got that phrase there. The first thing that always comes to my mind is gratitude. Like it's put me yeah. into, it's put me into spaces of recognizing gratitude. Cause there's going to be days when you're going to feel, you know, off and stuff like that, but it doesn't mean it needs to be a hard day. It might've just had a hard moment that you had. And that always, to me, it reminded me to like shift to gratitude. Like, oh yeah, I've got a lot of good stuff going on in here. Yeah. This is actually a, this is an easy day. It's not a hard day. I can shift that immediately. So you've made an impact on me. I'm sure you made a lot of impact on a lot of other people with that too. So that's why I wanted to, to kick this off and to, to frame this right away with that, with that notion. I appreciate you for sharing that. I had no idea. So that's cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so I want to bring this back to really your journey. So um, to frame this, I want to, you know, really give you the mic to explain, uh, you know, your journey through this time, because you are a very different person now than who you were in previous time from there. So to frame this, I mean, at one point you were over 350 pounds and yes. then went into this journey of now being a successful health and fitness and mindset coach from there. So what, what was it uh, that made this transition happen back at this time? Well, I guess like starting 
from way back then, yeah, like, um, post high school, I felt like everybody was winning around me. <laughs> and I was just at home with no desire to do anything. I just felt like a lost soul. Like you, I saw my friends going to college. I saw friends, you know, getting married. I saw going to like the army and listening to whatever um, military uh, branch. And we'll get right back to this episode. But first I wanna tell you about Nabosu Technology. Nabosu is the leading company in foot care products created by the top functional podiatrist and human movement specialist, Dr. Emily Splickle and her team. Our feet are a connection to the earth and the foundation of all human movement. And it's often the most overlooked part of our body when it comes to health, fitness, and recovery. Personally, I never thought much of how the foot impacts my movement and strength until years ago when I found my intense sciatic pain I was dealing with was coming from a locked up midfoot and ankle issue. So after putting emphasis on this, my pain subsided completely. And since then, I've made sure to take care of my feet before anything else in training. I use the Nabosu Neuroball every day, whether I'm training or not, and I felt significantly better in both my barefoot strength training as well as running outside on grass and on pavement. Nabosu has the best products on the market, including the Neuroball, Recovery Socks, Splays, Activation Insoles, and the Kinesis Boards and Mats. So to check out Nabosu Technology, click on the link in the comments or go to nabosutechnology.com and use the code CONNECTION and get an additional 10% off your purchase. Again, that's the code CONNECTION. Use it to get 10% off. All right, now let's get back to it. I just felt like a complete loser, man. Straight up. And that just went me down to this dark space for a while and I just gained a bunch of weight. And, you know, back then when MTV was cool, that's all I watched, play video games. <laughs> uh, that's, that's all I did. I didn't work um, until I finally gave myself permission to. <laughs> okay. But I started doing something with my life. And you know, like, I went up a flight of stairs though. This is where it finally clicked into me. I went up a flight of stairs, 14 steps to be exact. And once I reached to the very top, I had a hard time breathing, Michael. I realized, I'm like, whoa, I am one huge person. <laughs> like, uh, I'm large, I'm obese. Let's just say I am fat. Yeah. Fat as fuck. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed yeah. to swear. Yeah, 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 yeah let, her, let her rip, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but that just made me feel so ashamed of myself, man. Like... I had all these thoughts come into my head, I'm like, you're a loser. No one's going to be able to love you. And I like, I, I, like a goal of mine at the time, like, I want to be a dad someday. I want to have a family because I grew up with four sisters, you know, like parents. And it's like, I wanted a life like that too. And, and I just felt like I was alone and I did not see my way, like a way out of it. But I, you know, like I made a decision right there and then I'm like, I am not going to feel this way ever again i promise myself like I, I i deserve to be healthy to be happy to just do what i how, how i want and not feel sorry for myself anymore and like the next day i signed up to go to the ymca um got got my membership showed up with a looking like rocky man like with a hooded sweatshirt on sweatpants yeah. I didn't know any better. I'm like, I didn't have all this information that we have today. Sure. And I went off of literally Rocky movies, Men's Health magazine. That's it. All the common thing was you got to sweat, you got to run, like anything that you see <laughs> that's on TV. Mm -hmm. That's what I got to do, whatever. Um, so I showed up, I went to the Y, and once I once I got into the the fitness facility, all you see is a bunch of cardio machines. And you know, like I see people running, I'm like, no, that looks way too high. I don't know why people. Mm -hmm want to suffer like that yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, I look at the recumbent bikes i'm like nah that's too easy and then sure. i saw this thing called the art trade i'm like oh i've never heard of this before this looks pretty yeah. cool so it's okay. like an elliptical and mm -hmm. i'm gonna try this out man this looks pretty cool and i got on there you know, like there's like no settings at all i just started moving the timer was going you know, like take a while guess how, was, how long i was on there like I'm, I'm gonna give you five minutes oh Come on, dude. Give me nine. I was on it for nine. All right. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I was it. on it for nine minutes. Sure. And it was like the worst nine minutes of my life at the time. I'm like, uh, this is hard. So that's a slow nine minutes. Yeah. It's the slowest yeah. nine minutes of my life. Yeah. <laughs> but it reminded me of like uh, in grade school, like we did this like nine minute run test. Sure. So I, 
like, and that's why I thought of like, well, this is really hard. Cause I, I just went all out. Cause you know, that's what typically I guys do. We know one speed that goes fast. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I, I, I nearly got off. I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing this. This mm-hmm. is way too hard. Uh, yeah. This is stupid. Like why do, why do people do this for fun? Sure. Okay. And it took me like a couple days to go back now. Cause I had this realization, like I am not going to get what I want if I just stay at home mm-hmm. with these negative thoughts, these negative emotions. Oh my God, I need to get out of here. Yeah. I need to go back. I need to do something. And yeah. like, I didn't have the answers at the time, but I just needed to do something. Sure. So let me ask you, when you, when you hit that 14 steps and you couldn't breathe at that time, and that was like that moment that's so clear in your head, was that a, did that moment like shock you or was it more of like, this is the, the straw that broke the camel's back because you were thinking about this for a while? Oh, broke me, man. That's why I yeah. realized it. I'm like, sure, it's like I've noticed, like, you know, I was getting into like extra large, extra, extra large mm-hmm. uh, clothes, but I didn't really think much of it. Uh, you know, like, yeah, whatever. It's just, it's, I'm just buying new clothes. I'm just getting big. It, but then I realized, like, wow, like, I'm going to live alone for the rest of my life. I literally said that to myself, like, who could possibly love someone <laughs> at this state? Yeah. <laughs> like, besides my mom of course yeah. but yeah like, and, and like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like and that's like the talk i had to myself like hey man you said you want to be healthy you want to do some pretty cool things like you want to date beautiful girls but well, you gotta get your ass back to the gym yeah. <laughs> yeah. and sure enough that's what i did that's like and i just kept on going and i learned things along the way from interacting with other gym goers there you know i like, mm-hmm. You know, like um, to this day, I'm really good friends with uh, a few uh, of them. And then they're like, wow. And they're like, Anthony, like, to who you are today is just amazing. Like, I used to like yeah. sprint down the treadmills, the, like the, and people would just look at me like, are you going to be okay? Like, I used to sit in steam rooms with my hooded sweatshirt on, with my sweatpants down yeah. to my shoes, with the shoes on. <laughs> and, I, and I would be suffering in there because, yeah. like, like I said, I didn't know. I didn't know any better. But yeah. like, I went off of movies and I, and I'm just, and that's why I kind of developed this like mentality of just an, it's, it's just an easy day, easy day. Like you can go, you can stay in here for another five minutes. So I was like in this pressure cooker. I'm like, you can do this. Like you can withstand this. It's just a temporary feel. Yeah. And I'm like, life, and you just like this little tiny glass that you can see through. I'm wiping it every like 30 seconds. Like has my five minutes gone by yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I'll just be sitting there. And there's like dudes that are naked that are, every single time they pass me, like, don't pass out. I'm like, don't say that to me. I'm like, oh, yes. like they I'm were going, saying that, they were saying that yeah, to you. Right, don't pass out. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's oh, a huge yeah. guy. Where am yeah, I? Yeah. 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 And they just like, they can see me just like huffing and puffing. They're like, don't pass out. I'm like, no, I'm going to be yeah. fine. Yeah. Don't what what great me. advice. Thank <laughs> you. I, I, yeah. I promise I won't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'll be fine. Just like, just leave. Like, you, you obviously can't handle it if you're naked ass so i'm gonna be fine (laughs) that's a that's a powerful mindset to have right at the beginning of a journey of like recognizing that one day at a time like that's not that doesn't seem as common specifically at such a journey like that to be able to get into that mindset so quickly was that something that you learned at all or was that just something that immediately just came to you if like i guess it just came to me yeah Yeah. because i was like i was in so much pain michael that i was willing to do whatever it took to get myself out of the situation. I didn't want to be fat anymore. I didn't want to be obese. Like, I, like you know, at the time too, I was starting to get, um, have nephews and nieces come into my life. I'm like, I want to be able to play with these kids mm. one day. And it was like, I, I grew up with um, with four sisters. Like I have a half brother, but I didn't get to know him until I was like in my early teens. I'm like, mm-hmm. I missed the opportunity of having like a brotherly type of figure. Yeah. Uh, like, so I want to be that for for them. I want to be that cool uncle, the fun uncle yeah. uh, that like, I didn't really have when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's like I was I was I was looking at my 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 outcome here. I'm like, that's what I'm shooting for. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm, I want to date pretty girls. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like selfish to say that, or like really like you know. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's like two major two major uh, quotes kind of came to my mind when you're speaking there. Like one, I think, is so powerful, which is, 
you know, problems are complicated, but solutions are simple. You know, it's like how you get somewhere and everything that came up of where you are at that moment that's serving a problem, that could be very complicated. You might have a million different reasons from how you grew up to why you got there. But as you just demonstrated, like the solution is simple. I got to do something. I got to take some action on this and just keeping it simple and just going in every day on that, you know, it's just simple solution. This is an easy day. I can do this for another five minutes. And then the other one is, it's, I mean, it's, I think the reality of it is that, you know, when the pain of staying where you are becomes more painful than the pain of change, that's when real change occurs. And it seems that's what, and seems that's what really happened to you at this time. Yeah. You know, I go, you know, people ask me like, how did you get yourself to it? I'm like, I don't know. I just did it. <laughs> but now I do, of course, like after like the research that I've, um, I've, mm-hmm. and all the uh, the things that I know now, I'm like, I know exactly how I did it with the sure. science. Of that. I mean, that's why I teach and show to right. my co- co- coach now. I'm like, this is how I made every day. Easy, and this is like the science that backs it up. Mm-hmm. let's do it it's so simple <laughs> yeah. it is but like we you know i like, can people tend to wait for whatever reason and i get it i totally get it and like um i like i'll, I'll wait till things get better you know like, i'll wait till this season is done or mm-hmm. wait till whatever the case whatever excuse sure. just, whatever excuse is there but there's no better time to do it when you're when life is like hectic because when you're starting to do these things, the simple things, you're just going to make your days a lot easier rather than waiting. Because when I hear people say, oh, I'll wait till it gets easier. I'm like, no, it's like you you purposely want to sabotage yourself for another 30, 60, 90, a year. Yeah. I'm like, you don't even know it though. But like until I just like say that to their face, I'm like, what exactly are you waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's tough. I mean, there's, I think, I mean, there's so many underlying messages that could be in there. Right. I mean, one of, of course, them, yeah. Or, yeah, one of them is definitely like, I'm, I'm scared to make a change. You know, it's like to admit that, like you said, like to admit that, no, yeah, I'm not just gaining a little weight. I'm fat as fuck. Like, as you said, like, that, <laughs> yeah. it, it, like that's, I mean, that's a harsh reality to say, but, you know, I think we, you know, we often are almost so we've, uh, we're so fragile with ourselves in the language that we say, like we berate ourselves a lot in our own mind, but also we don't allow ourselves to hear like the real terms of what we say that like have truth because the truth is challenging. The truth hurts, you know, on that. And when you recognize that, I think then if you don't change then, and you, and you speak the truth, then that's like knowing, okay, I'm not giving my all for this. And almost that could be even a little bit more challenging. Right. Yeah. It's like you have to become something more than you yeah. are. I like guess, you know, like, it, like you said, it's part of, you know, you're going to have to give up something, but that fear of like giving it up, like what, what else is coming to my way? Yeah. It's like, so yeah. in order for something new exist, to exist, we have to let something go. I had to let go of unhealthy behaviors. I feel like those unhealthy behaviors were super comfortable to me. Mm-hmm. But they weren't serving me. My, I can easily eat a pizza every single day today, sure. but I know it's not going <laughs> to, but I know it's not going to benefit me. Um, I'm going to have that dad bod. That's <laughs> I'm going to, yeah. uh, like uh, people aren't just like, uh, aren't going to want to follow me anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's something. Like, feel here. Like, yeah. I'm not like, I shouldn't be here right now, Michael. I shouldn't be here talking to you about, you know, weight loss or mindset or anything like that. I could have just stayed where I was. And it's like, it takes courage to do that. It takes courage to purposely insert yourself into an environment such as like a gym, being huge. I'm like, you know, people are afraid of going to the gym because they feel like people are watching. I'm like, I didn't care. But that was the last thought on my mind. I'm like, if I put my hooded sweatshirt on, I put my hoodie on, and I went to work. I didn't care who was there. It's almost like your superhero costume at the time. Uh, yeah, right, as it was. I wish I could find that exact... Uh, Costumes. Exactly. <laughs> right? just, yeah. The yeah. The gray. The gray hoodie costume. I yeah, get it. Like yeah. A, so uh, I remember it was like a Ralph Lauren polo. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> did you did you start seeing uh, results right away, or did it take some time before you started to see it? And you were just I'm I'm committed to going every day, and this is gonna I'm gonna figure this out. 
Oh, I was winning right away. I saw yeah. results. I'm like, this is cool. This is addicted. <laughs> um, of course, I have you know, like a lot of excess water weight on me. And that just like, I felt like I was deflating. I'm sure. Like, oh, I, I'm becoming something new. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm looking pretty good. I'm feeling good. Yeah. And that just like changes like your whole perspective in life. I'm like, I can do this. So I like this. So I made a commitment to myself. I flexed my courage muscle and I realized I'm capable of doing this. And all of a sudden confidence started coming in. I'm like, all right. And like I'll work yeah. hard the year. I lost like 150 plus pounds. And my own life changed, man. It felt like magic to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like people looked at me differently. People treated me differently. Yeah. And from people that I haven't seen in a long time, they're just like, what happened here? Yeah, <laughs> I, I used to go by Tony back in the day when I first started. Mm-hmm. And that's why I made this like transition. I'm like, I'm going to be called Anthony now because that's my real name. My parents gave me that. I'm going to, you know, like not everybody has the opportunity to change their name. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to go by Anthony now because this is the new version of me. Yeah, And I ran with it. You're like, like hey, Tony. I'm like, no, I'm not Tony anymore. I'm Anthony. Yeah. I go, I Dude, I, I love that so much. I really do. I've, I've actually, I've gone through a journey of that myself. Um, if different thing, it's kind of like, you're almost like creating a new avatar of your person yeah. on there. It's really a powerful thing to do, but I, I love stories like this of hearing all of a sudden, like you, the buy-in comes, the results come. And it's like, it's such an energy change in there. You know, it's like, we don't gain or lose energy. It just gets transformed. And all of a sudden you start seeing results and it's like everything you start, the confidence muscle, the courage muscle starts flexing from there. I've, I've told this story before on the podcast, but at my old place that I managed, I used to, I was right in front of where people would check in at the gym and mm-hmm. I would watch people, everybody would walk in and they had to go past my office. And I would see some people, their posture would change after like a couple of months where it's like you would see when they first came in, it was like that shuffle of the feet. It's almost kind of like somebody's like pulling them back. Like it's not this full confidence Till all of a sudden you would see them swipe in and just walk in, just go right to it. It's like you right, see right. it's yeah. and, oh, it, there's a, there's a, it's, it's, it was the swagger muscle that came. And I would I always made it sure I like I purposely would pull them to a side, almost like a secret. Be like, hey, you know what? Like you're you know, you're walking different in here. And it was almost like a joke, like, what are you talking about? It's like, I could tell that you're kicking ass on your program because the posture and the swagger that you have of walking in here is completely different than when you came in before. And it's funny because we all look at like the aesthetics or like the health, like the blood work, all that type of stuff. You see it in everything when you see that change, like even just by how you walk, how you present yourself into the world. And I always thought that was one of the coolest things when you see somebody that's on the path of making those good changes for themselves. You can see it in all different types of language within their body. Yeah. You can just feel the energy too with like, yeah. like going through this transformation. Uh, like, like I see you and like, I, I know exactly how you feel right now. And it's awesome. Like you just do your thing. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> um, but yeah, it's it just day and night, how people treat you from being obese to being healthy and fit. I'm like, huh, that's, that's, yeah. it, it's, it is what it is. And I get it. And I go, it's something that it's a core value of like my coaching program is excellence is your presence, right? The way you present yourself to the world, like how you, like how you walk, how you talk, how you yeah. just like, uh, just do anything in life. It's just like practice that, like you are an excellent person and like yeah. being present with your own self, like, there's no better feeling. Yeah. And that's what I, that's exactly I want people to feel what I feel. I like just like feeling that t- so sort of excellence and feel like you're winning all the time. Mm-hmm. And I feel just like just triumphant every single yeah. day. And it's just, it's just no better feel. Yeah. You know, Anthony, I, I hear a lot of people who, when they're on that journey, they're just getting started and they see like some results going, but immediately in their mind, they'll dilute it down. Somebody will say, oh, like, like, hey, you look great. It's like, yeah, but I got a long way to go. Like we'd like deflect on it a little bit of being like, we don't want to celebrate those wins too much because almost it's a mentality of like thinking, oh, the other shoe's going to drop or something like mm-hmm. that. You see, you have something completely different. Whereas you said, like, I was winning right away. Like I knew I was going to go in this. I'm it's so fascinating to me when you got into coaching and you talk with people, like 
is that a mindset that you've seen like similar to yourselves or is it more like are a lot of people that you're talking about speak more negatively about themselves and maybe dilute their progress? Down? I tend to see a lot more negative. Yeah. And, and that's not like, that's something that what people would ask me, like, how, well, how did you get yourself to think that way or do those things? I'm like, what do you mean? Don't you think that's the way too? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I understand though, like, cause it wasn't always that way. I felt like I was winning. Like I can, I can understand how people would just deflect. Oh, you're like, Hey, thanks. But I'm going to go over here still. Like I still got this much to go. Um, but I make that a huge, a huge emphasis. Like we need to celebrate every single moment, every single day that we're here. Like the, the gratitude of like, Hey, I'm here. I walked, I got it in. Like it wasn't my full workout, but it was still my 30 minutes. Like just like before this podcast, like um, mm. I wanted to get a full workout in, but t- like uh, things happen, mm. uh, well, I, uh, I had to cut it short. I'm like, you know what? It's just, it is what it is. I'm, I'm here. Um, I made a promise yeah. to myself I was going to be here with Mike and I'm feeling really good. I got like those, those, those 30 minutes felt, I felt awesome afterwards. Yeah. And yeah, you just got to recognize the small things all along the way. It's that you can't have an all or nothing mentality. Or else you'll just, you'll just have this evil cycle of doing, trying, yeah. and then reverting back to your old ways. So it's just the, it's simple. Just keep things super simple along yeah. the way uh, yeah. for me. And you're like, yeah, and it's just to make every day an easy day, I just got to gotta be grateful. Yeah. I really love that. So, so how long, so you went from 350. What do you, what do you weigh now? Right now I am at 195. 195 okay. Yeah. So, hell of a journey. How long, how long was that process for you to take where you got under that 200 mark? Oh, I would say it took me a good four years yeah. to get under 200. Um, but it's just, I've been up and down it quite quite often. Yeah. <laughs> as, as the process as the yeah. process goes, peaks yeah. and valleys. Yeah. Like, as you go a, like I, you know, it's along the way too. Like I was, I just had like a, tra- like a, some challenges along the way too. Yeah. Like after, after can you I speak on those? Ton of after I dropped a ton of weight, I felt like I, like I said, I felt like I made it. Uh, I'm here. I got. I have a beautiful girlfriend. I got. I got an awesome job. I was super comfortable with my life. And then one day, you know, God decided to test me. The universe, whatever you want to call it. Like I had the sharp pain in my testicle, and I was like a typical guy. I didn't want to address it <laughs> i'm like you know what? let's just go away and no big deal until finally like my it was affecting my work performance i was working at a lumber yard at the time they're like hey you really need to go see a doctor like my girlfriend at the time she's like you gotta go so like something's really wrong with you i had this really bad pimp walk like <laughs> like i was dragging my back my leg um and i just couldn't do anything i couldn't work out i could barely walk and I remember it was going, it was a Friday night where I finally went into the walk-in clinic and they, like it was closing to like, Hey, like what, what you have right now, it, you're better off going to the, to the ER. Yeah. Like we, it was like, you got to go over there. Am I right? Whatever. So I went to the ER and they did some testing on me. And at the end of the night, they said, you know what you, there's two things here. Uh, it could be two things. One, could be a twisted testicle. Second, it could be um, testicular cancer. And I'm like, no, that, that that's not that's not gonna happen to me. I, I convinced myself it was a twisted testicle. I'm like, it's whatever. But like, like Monday, we'll go, we'll know for sure, um, and we'll schedule a follow up. I'm like, great. Like all weekend long, I just kind of told people, oh, I got a, I got a twisted testicle, and we'll just gotta we'll figure it out on Monday. And Monday finally came and I went to this doctor's visit by myself. And um, I was just sitting in that room alone, quiet. And then doctor finally came in. 
who barely introduced himself. And he just got straight to it. He's like, hey, Anthony, you have to stick your cancer. And instantly, man, I started crying like a baby. I put my hands over my eyes and I bawled my eyes out, man. Like I could, I could feel myself being there again. And the very first question I asked him, Michael, was, am I going to die? I was just so furious, man. I'm like, what the hell did I do so wrong? What did I do to deserve this? And the doctor showed me, he's like, no, you're not going to die. But we need to do something right now. I'm like, no, man, I, I, I'm no, I don't have cancer. Don't tell me that. I was just pure denial. And I went home, like I drove home and crying my eyes out. I'm like, oh my gosh, like my life is over. Uh, I, I'm going to get a second opinion. I went down to Freighter Hospital, which is like in Milwaukee. It's about like an hour away from me to see a, a specialist, cystic cancer specialist. And he said, hey, you, you do in fact have cystic cancer. The only difference is I would have just taken you to uh, emergency operation right away. I'm like, <sighs> again, I'm like, what? What the fuck? Why? Why is this happening to me? Like, uh, and like, I stopped believing in God after that. After that, I'm like, He's just here. He put me here to suffer. Uh, I I already went through OBC and I said a lot of mean things to myself during that time period, and I felt like it's come back to me. I'm like, I don't want this. <laughs> I don't, so I went, I went back to Sheboygan, my hometown here. And I'm like, let's just do it. Let's get it over with. I, I, I don't want to deal with this. Let's get this operation done. Yeah, like it took me about like a good solid month to finally recover and start moving again. And, but like how I felt afterwards, Mike, I just, I felt less of a man because the testicle was taken away from me. I was ashamed of myself, I'm like, I'm, again, just like, I'm, I, I was very hesitant to having sex with my, with my girlfriend at the time. I'm like, what's she gonna think of me? I'm like, I, I, am I not going to have a family? How I always imagined. I had to go with the radiation treatment. And that was so hard for me. I had to go 30 days of radiation treatment, like, you know, radiation kills. And I felt like I was, a part of me was dying. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna have th that type of family. I'm not gonna have the love I want because I, I just won't allow myself to. I was in the dark space again. But then I realized like I've been here before. I know exactly what to do. I just need to be brave again. And flex my courage muscle. Be like, hey man, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. Because you're a winner. Anthony Flores is not a loser. It's amazing at the time like that, that how many emotions go through your, go through your body at that time. Every different question that was probably going through your mind, but it arrives at the right one where it said, I know how to get out of this. I'm a winner. Yeah. Right. Through, through all the, through all that craziness, incredible dark questions that pop up, which I think is only natural that everybody has those questions to go through, but it eventually arrives at the one that pops up in bold letters where I got this. Yeah. And that's the mentality I had. I'm like, I, you got this, you know what to do. 
just go. You'll figure it out along the way. There's no, you know, at the time this was about, it's gonna be 17 years in August. You know, at the time when I was going through my radiation treatment, they actually advised me not to work out. They don't say that to you now these days. <laughs> um, no, they I don't. Care for that. <laughs> like, uh, I, like every single day they would weigh you in mm -hmm. and they would notice like, hey, you're losing weight. What are you doing? I'm like, I'm working out. <laughs> They're like, Anthony, you should really conserve your, your energy for your treatments. I'm like, no. I'm going to go to the gym, an environment filled with other people that want to become something more. I want to surround myself with other winners too. Because if I sit at home, I know exactly how I'm going to talk to myself. Yeah. I'm not going to be there. I'm not, I'm not going to the gym to set PRs. I'm just there to move, to make myself space. feel better. And I did what I could. Like I showed up, whatever my hundred percent was that day, I gave it. Mm -hmm. Like I still sprinted on the treadmill whenever I could. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. I was pumping iron as best as I could. Yeah. And that just made my day easier. Just that little bit of time. And like they kept on asking me every single like, why? Why do you keep coming? And like, yeah. oh, why do you keep going to the gym? And finally, I just had enough. I kind of went off. <laughs> Mind you, I'm like, I'm, I'm laying on a cold, like medical table, like waiting to get zapped from all this radiation. And like, uh, a nurse came up to me and it's like, why do you keep, why do you keep going? We ask you not to. And I just turned around, turned my head. I said, because I want my life back. Yeah. I want my life back and I'm going to keep going. You literally have to kill me if you don't want me to go. And I had a lady, she was wearing her mask and I, all you can see is her cheeks, just like rise up, she was smiling. She said, okay. Oh. And after that, she's like, just stop asking me. And I'm like, I am going to overcome this. I am not going to be a cancer survivor. I'm going to be a cancer champion. And I'm on this 17, I'm going to have a 17 year winning streak with this. You know, like, I don't like it when people say like, oh, I'm a cancer. I'm like, no, 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 you're a champion. It takes a lot for someone to overcome something like that. Like you are a champion. You have to give yourself a ton of credit for showing up for yourself every single day, even though you didn't want to. You gave yourself permission to win. Yeah. You know, we, you know, those things leave scars and, uh, you know, they're memories. And it's so easy to remember the times when that you regret or that you felt weak and you wish you could go back. And it dims down those times when you realized how fucking strong that you were in times by just waking up and showing up, you know, it's like, it, it doesn't seem sometimes in the simplicity of it, of something heroic, but it is, it's like recognize it. And I love that you use that word champion. And it's like, because it is every day, like it's a new opportunity to win that day. And you say, make an easy day and be a champion. Say, I'm not a survivor. I'm a champion. Like that's, it's, it's such a subtle difference, but I mean, from we've learned, you know, in a group, it's like your language is powerful of what you use, you know, for that. And instead of using it as a crutch, you use that really as like a harpoon to propel you forward. Right. Exactly. Right. Well, I'm just not, I'm just uh, here to win, man. I'm here to dominate <laughs> and, and everything that I do. Uh, yeah. it's, I, I, I dominated obesity. I dominated cancer and I, you know, to like fast forward to today, like I have a beautiful wife and a beautiful son, which was like at the very beginning, I didn't think it was possible. And I didn't think it was possible for me to be a dad after our going through all the cancer. That was a surprise to me when I was when my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, yeah. I was like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, 
Ja, ja, mä helvä, kun mä nuspii. <laughs> mä en say that, Derek. She'll probably listen to I'm, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad you did it. I'm, uh, so, yeah. So, like, um, but that's, like, the thought in my head, whoa. Yeah. And uh, she's, like, uh, yeah. she'll probably, like, give me crap after. Like, she went in, like, showers, like, after. So, it's, like, it was a big shock to her. I'm, I'm, like, I just sat on the couch. I'm, like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be a dad. Yeah. It was, like, the best news I ever had in my life. Like, Oh my gosh. All I needed was one. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's power. Yeah, it's not the quantity, it's the power of it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you need so, fun, man. This yeah. is so cool. And yeah, I want, it's- I want to ask you about when you would leave treatment, you leave the doctors, and then you go to the gym and you said you wanted to be around other winners, that support system. I think that's so, it's such an important message because it's, I know personally, like I'm a much more introverted person and also a man, it's very easy to like want to not be a burden to other people. You stay in your own mind, you stay in your own headspace where you want it to be around other people, which I think is so powerful. It's such a good lesson for anybody dealing with this stuff to not go internal about it to release this out and be around other people did you have did people at the gym know what you were going through at this time i don't to be honest with you know yeah just want to be around it i just wanted i just wanted to be there yeah and i didn't want to you know for the longest time i didn't tell anybody i was like people knew yeah and i was uh going through cancer but i don't I mean, is that something you just bring up in a conversation? Hey, I'm a cancer survivor. Yeah. Or I'm, I'm going through cancer right now. I, I didn't want people to know because I didn't want people to look at me differently. Because when I told people I have cancer, it almost looked like it was like, like the last time they were going to see me. And I, I'll never forget those looks. I have them imprinted in my head. <laughs> like little Polaroid shots of like the, the, the look of I'm like, I am so sorry. I like poor you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm, I'm gonna be okay. Like I said, I'm gonna be fine. I'm like, don't like, don't feel sorry for me. It's just a temporary thing. Oh, I'm gonna get through this. Um, but yeah, like going to the gym, I just, I just wanna be around. I wanna be around that energy. You know, like I'm in, I was a huge introvert at the time. I'm like, I guess it's so hard, but I know how to dance over to the other side. <laughs> it's now, exactly. Yeah. Uh, like, I just wanted to be around people that I knew that are like, were strong, that were powerful, that had the endurance. Cause that's, that's what I was going for going through my treatments. Cause Lance Armstrong was a man at the time. I'm like, if that guy could do it, I could do it. Yep. Like say what you want about him. Like, uh, to just like, what did he, what he's done? I'm like, I really don't care. Like he gave me this belief. And do you, do you read his book? It's not about the bike. No, I had no idea. Yeah, like, I'll, like, but uh, I'll 20, oh, yeah, oh, dude, it's one of the best books I ever read. Like, and I said the same thing. It's like, how, whatever you want to, you know, say about him and what he did and stuff like that. That book is so powerful of what that man went through in it. Yeah. And, and, and throughout all the shit that he had to deal with, you know, it's, it's, it's so many similarities between your story and his that I say. It's really crazy. Yeah, and like he he gave me a like a belief of like you know what if I can conquer these like challenges and take on Tour de France so on and so forth I'm like I'm gonna do that too but in my own way like post like a cancer I'm like I'm gonna start doing endurance events so I got into like half marathons and then full marathons I, I was like pretty quick at these like people started noticing me like. How, how how are you doing these things? Like it's a common question whenever I level myself up. Like, how'd you get to do these things? And I'm like, and then I got into the triathlon scene. And like I was pretty good at that too. I've already done it from the sprint distance, which is the, the short distance, mm-hmm. distance to a full Ironman distance. And I even got the chance to compete in the the USA um national age group competition too. I'm like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. Isn't it sweet? <laughs> Um, and that's when people started like really paying attention. Like you were obese, you had cancer and you like doing all these endurance stuff. And that like opened up the opportunity for me to become a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. Like I, I randomly got a phone call from a friend who 
worked at the gym where I was, you know, through my treatments or at the time, he, he's like, hey man, you, you got a really cool story. Would you consider being a personal trainer at this health club that I work at? And I'm like, can I do it full time? Because <laughs> I was working at the factory at the time and they're like, I kind of want to get out of here. <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, like you have, you have, a tremendous story and I know you'll you'll do well here. Mm-hmm. Like, Sign me up, man. Sign me up. <laughs> and that's like where I was introduced to the the fitness industry. Yeah. And, and it, it's just like I couldn't understand at first like people are gonna pay me to show them how to work out. <laughs> <laughs> greatest con greatest con in the game. Yeah. <laughs> And but like it, but once I got into like the whole um fitness side of it, like personal training, I'm like it was more than just that. You know, like it was like the connection between the with yeah. the individual. It wasn't they wanted to know how I did things. Mm-hmm. They're like, you have something. And I want it too. I'm like, really? <laughs> uh, it is. It's a strange yeah, thing, right? It's it is. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, we learn through we learn through stories. I mean, that's the main thing is we learn through stories. And when you see somebody that has experienced something similar, you know, where it's not even an external thing, but something of just energy where you felt down or you felt like, you you know, there's so many people that have had that story of their own 14 steps when it was this moment in their head when they're like, I am, something is really wrong here. This is not how I'm supposed to live. I need to make a change. And Mm -hmm. A lot of what's sad is a lot of people don't know where to go from there. And it's a challenging thing. And if they, you know, hopefully they find the courage to take that step like you did and throw on the hoodie and just start going and doing it. But a lot of people, it's not just the one time it needs to be over and over again, you know, to go through it. But there's so many people that have had that moment. There's many that have sat in that chair and got that news from the doctor, just like that too. And to hear that somebody else came out of it and triumphed from it and not just, you know, willy nilly and just kind of plotted along, but actually burst through it and said, I fucking killed this thing. And I'm a champion on there. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's an energy that you're going to take stock of. And you're going to take notice of, of like, Oh my God, like this guy's speaking like this, like, oh my, can I do that? Like, <laughs> you know, because I mean, we all, I mean, we all, we all share the same energy of stuff, you know, it's like what we have, but what we have that's really personal and what's powerful is the stories that we have. And, you know, I know it's, it took a while for you, I believe, to really start sharing these stories openly from there. Yeah. And it kind of kept it from there. What, what was, was there a catalyst that uh, kind of propelled you into really starting to speak about this story was a kind of a gradual kind of thing of like, I think I need to share this more with the world. Yeah. So like that, that's a, it's a great question. Like once I got into that position, being a personal trainer, people started really getting to know who I was in my community, in my County. Like I, there's this big event here um, at a famous racetrack called road America. They have this American cancer society puts on a, run every single year and there's like thousands of people that come to this and do a four mile walk run whatever the case may be and i was designated as the honorary sur- survivor that year a um, long time ago they're like you have to like you're the honorary survivor but you have to speak in front of all these people like say what <laughs> like like share your story mm-hmm. i'm like okay Sure. Like, <laughs> like I was super shy. And you know, like there's about like three, a little over 3,000 people eyes on me. You know, standing on this like platform. I'm like, oh my gosh. And like after sharing, after after sharing and the race was done and over with, I had so many people come up to me afterwards, like, that is like the most bravest thing I've ever heard in my life. I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I didn't what, know how what to handle I, I didn't know how to handle those type of comments. Cause I like if I people say it's brave, it's courageous, but like I did not see any other way. Like I, I wasn't going to let it defeat me. Cause I've been there before. I, I knew how to get myself out of it. 
And that's why I just started realizing, like, I need to start sharing this more. And like, I got to share some different opportunities along the way with like um, cancer survivorship groups um, with American Cancer Society as well. But it wasn't until maybe like two years ago with the group that we're in, thanks to, mm -hmm. he, 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 he literally told me, share your fucking story. <laughs> and I'm gonna make you as a special guest. And that just like broke me down. Um, like I know the power it is behind it. I just didn't have, I wasn't brave enough to share it just yet because it's so personal to me and I get emotional just like as you saw. Um, but it was, it was, it was worse back then. <laughs> like, I, like, like I, I feel a lot more comfortable sharing this now. Um, I know the impact behind it and it will inspire and empower other people to start doing something. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. Just go. Yeah. And like it's, you know, I'm not here to, <clears throat> recruit people to work with me like I want to be someone's Lance Armstrong I want to say like I heard Anthony talk I heard him listen I, I listened to him I saw him and because of him I gave myself permission to do something too you know in the group that we're, we're both a part of there was this eight question uh kind of homework thing that they gave. And some of the questions were great and stuff. And one of them that really hit me was they said, you know, what does the world need more of? What deeds need to be done? And the best answer that I could come up with on that was more encouragement to share stories and share your vulnerabilities of it. And with all the the mess and all the the you know screw ups, it doesn't need to be perfectly articulate that comes with time, but just actually having the the bravery to share those stories out there more and more because you know coaches like you can you can teach you know 10 sets of you know 10 sets of five you know you can teach reps you know you can count those you can teach macros you can teach mindset and stuff like that but to share a story of experience and say I feel you I see you I know what you're going through you know I've been there myself and having that kindred spirit on that I think that's really what coaching is all about. You know, it's like with uh, the other aspects of it is just programming. It's just, you know, offense, you know, the aspect of coaching is really connecting with your players and really having them buy into you and you buy into them and you guys come together in synchronicity. So um, honestly, man, I feel, I feel so fortunate to, to speak to you with it because as I said before, we've had known each other for a bit, but I never got a chance to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really hear your story, you know, from your mouth on this. So yeah. really, really grateful for you taking the time today, brother. Yeah. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I, I, I was looking forward to this. Um, I'm having fun sharing it. Um, like uh, I'm, I'm here to inspire and make an impact on other people. I want, I want people to say, like, you know what, if you can do it, I can do it. It's as simple as that. Like anyone can do what I've overcame, like whether it's, Cancer, obesity, whatever. Like you just need, you just need to start doing things, taking action, and being brave about it too. Yeah, love it. Love um, but yeah, like you know, I get back to like the whole coaching thing. Like I used to run a gym. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the whole sets or. You know, like the workouts that I did, I think it was because people came for me. It uh, like it sounds weird, but like I was able to connect on a deeper level with them that no one else could do. I could 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 provide. Uh, like I I I saw them. Yeah. Like you said, I I see you and I value. You. Uh, like I I I want to see you win, mm -hmm. just like me. I want you to make every day an easy day. And you know, like for people that have been seen in a while they still talk <laughs> the way I still do like I, I implemented that easy day um into their life and that just makes me happy I'm yeah. like and it, it's so cool I love it man I was gonna say like so fortunate that you caught that right off the bat but I don't think fortune has anything to do with that that's just who you are and you know everything that you experience you've um you know that's just who you are and I think that's absolutely phenomenal dude so 
brother, this has been a blast. Uh, I'd love to have you back on, you know, at some point we can keep jamming on this yeah. stuff. But yeah. But if people want to, if people want to follow up with your journey, connect with you, check out what you got going on, what's the best place that we can direct them? Yeah, you can either go to um, my Facebook page. It's my personal account, Anthony Fugotis, or you can go to my Instagram, YouTube. Uh, what is that? TikTok, uh, Anthony W. Flores. No, it's not winning, but it should be, but it's William. My real name is <laughs> Anthony W. Flores. Um, or if you're interested in my, in my coaching program, simply go to theeasydaylife.com. Perfect. Awesome, brother. Till next time. Listeners, thank you so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some great value here. And if you like this episode, please drop a comment and leave us a five-star rating and review. It does more to build the show than you can imagine. And do not forget to check out and join the Strength Connection Facebook group. In this group, I share the biggest takeaways and lessons from these amazing conversations, as well as training and strength tips for pursuing mastery and fulfillment in life. It's, this group is filled with individuals looking to take full control over their strength and it's the perfect space to explore new ideas and to share your journey. And you'll also get exclusive access to the Strength Connection Mastery Seminars. It's a deep dive into the physical, mental, and spiritual training that you can begin using immediately. So do not wait, go now. Seriously, go. I right, much love to you. Thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next one.